Well, let's see what it starts. I hooked up the gas. I uh, haven't ran this since... Uh, actually, I've never run it. I've only kicked it over, like I said, with ether. So let's see what happens. That was in 2016 when I first got it. Then I put it in storage. Just got fresh mix, fresh, uh, fresh gas and oil. Choke it. See what happens. Two, three, four. So, uh, I think the carburetor might be blocked, but I'm not sure. So, I just put a little gas down the uh, throat and see what happens. No choke. Odd. Very odd. Very odd. Uh, motor wasn't getting any fuel, all kinds of varnish in the bottom of the carburetor. Most likely the high speed jet is stuck. So I'm going to pop that out. If you do a lot of these high speed jet removals, I would buy one of these tools. Three one seven zero zero two. They're about eleven dollars now. I bought this like twenty years ago. It was like six ninety nine. But that's how you get these high speed jets out. Just pop this nut off. There's a washer on the nut. Stick it in there. Make sure you get it in there tight. And uh, if it doesn't turn even with the tool, you can heat it up with a torch. And it'll come out. But the first thing I noticed wasn't getting gas up through the high speed jet in the lower half of the carburetor bowl. A little tricky taking these off. This one screw here is a little tricky, but you just advance the throttle and you can get access to get that screw out. Also, the kill wires, I'll show you. Kill wires were shorting. I was trying to start it. All the plastic has gone on the kill wires, so I gotta replace the, the uh, magneto cutoff switch wires. Or repair it. I have a way of repairing them too, so we'll see. But I'm just going to disconnect that and try to start it. Move out the high speed jet. Real simple with the compressed air. <laughs> Clean as a whistle now. So I'm just going to slap it all back together and see what happens. Pulling the flywheel off. Spark is weak on both cylinders. <clears throat> Off with the flywheel. So I cleaned the carburetor. Now I'm doing the points. This is what you got to do. I mean, I had this thing kicked over six years ago. Basement. You know, humid air, dampness. So, we'll see what happens. Now, both set of points on the nine and a half, very oxidized. Let's see if we can get it to uh, focus. I 
and you can see. So I'm going to polish them with my blue roll lock. And be done with it. Put them back in the motor. So two things wrong with the tiller. Once I tried to start the motor, I had no control over the carburetor linkage. This uh, worm gear here was was 180 degrees out. So it wouldn't catch. And also they had a cotter pin in here. So I, I took the cotter pin out, which is right here, because it fit loose. So I lost some magneto action with that in there. So I took the cotter pin out, and I went through my uh, Harbor Freight um, roll pins and found an uh, eighth inch roll pin and put a roll pin back in there. So now it's nice and tight again. But the main thing was it was, it was 180 degrees out with the teeth on this worm gear. That mates with the shaft going to the t hand tiller. So it's fixed now. So now I'll be able to try to start and at least control the magneto to get it started. So we'll see what happens. Okay, tiller back installed. Everything works nice. You just touch the grip just a little bit and it moves right away. No play. The 9.5s had a pretty good system with gears. Much better than the later 9.9.15s. Well, that plastic junk they used in the tiller assembly, the gears and the shafts. But this is the way I want it to work. A little tricky with the three bolts here, getting them in and out. Best off taking the flywheel off, give you more room to get in there. Well, then that's a pretty easy job. And you got to hook up the fuel line with the clamp before you put the whole assembly in and snake it through. Other than that, one step closer to getting it running. Well, I couldn't even um, break it loose with my wrench. The thermostat wrench tool I made many years ago. My very first video will show this in action. But this won't even break it cold. So I'm going to heat it up nice and hot and see if it breaks loose. And I'll bring you back. Now this thermostat might have came out, you know, prying it up, although I couldn't budge it with my wrench. No corrosion at all around the, very little. I already hit it with WD-40, so you really can't see. But the thermostat was stuck open. Luckily it wasn't stuck up, and that creates a problem. But this thermostat, after it cooled down, still stayed open the whole time, so it was shot. So now I'm just going to put the cover back on and try to start it. Well, after numerous times trying to get the motor running, I had to, uh, nine and a half. It turned out that the passageway from here was clogged right in here. I didn't check it. I didn't try to, you had to block this off, and you have to block off inside here. I used like a putty, and this was block solid. So I had to, the original high-speed jet, I couldn't get it out with my tool with heat, so I drilled it out, replaced the high-speed jet, and when the jet was out, I was able to get in there and clean it out right where my uh, finger is, right here. My first finger. It was clogged right in that area. So now I got it all cleaned out. I put another high-speed jet in it, number 48, and now I'm going to put it all back together. I used to, I tried all kinds of things. Guitar strings work really well for trying to clean out the... Uh, carburetor passageways, also a piece of uh, rubber hose I used here, I inserted it in here, blocked this passageway off and also putty inside here where the uh, picks up the fuel off the high-speed jet and uh, I finally got it to free up and I checked it with another casting I had, another carburetor and uh, it's getting good airflow through it now so now I'm going to put it back together but three times I took the carburetor apart before I found that I should know better, but you know, everybody makes mistakes. I'm, I'm not perfect. <laughs> hey, it's only an outboard motor. At least it's not an airplane engine. <laughs> well, I basically did three things on this motor to get it to the state. 
First I fixed the tiller handle, I had to take it off, the gears weren't meshed properly. Uh, the two sets of gears inside of here, that was off. Half of the uh, teeth weren't meshed properly, I fixed that. Got rid of the cotter pin that was in here. Rebuilt the carburetor three times, found out that the main metering passageway was blocked. Right about here, which is very common. Um, I missed it the first two times. A special way of, of checking that and also I the points are heavily oxidized so now this is the first time trying to start it and see what happens here we go <laughs> So after finally getting it running, it took quite a, quite a bit to get it to go. Um, I still have a lean condition. It'll only stay running nice with the choke partially out, so I still got restrictions somewhere. Um, got a new fuel pump on it, so I don't know. I'm going to take the carburetor apart again. This is like number fourth. Maybe I missed something. I'm going to blow it out again. And if that don't work, I'm going to um, probably get another lower carburetor half. And see what happens but at least i got it going now where it runs it pumps water pretty good so there is some success here